Josh Doss, welcome to Planet America's Fireside Chat. Yeah, great, great to be here. I'm glad you all reached out. Josh, in recent elections, anywhere from sort of 5 to 10% of black voters have supported Republicans. Polls now, at least some of them, suggest that Trump could be attracting as much as twice that. So what do you think is going on? I don't believe that black voters are, are uh, very warm towards Trump. The research that we've been conducting at Hit Strategies among black voters is not showing that attraction towards Trump. I just led a poll uh, where we had a robust sample size of black voters, was Why over 1,300, uh, with a, a sub 3% margin of error, November. with some Thank oversamples. So a very, a very uh, you know, strong poll. And Donald Trump is still hanging out around that 12 to 9% support among black voters. And black voters seem to have the, have the same um, affinity for the Republican Party that they've always had. I'm not yeah, sure where these other polls, I think a lot of these other polls don't have a, a robust sample size of black voters, and they're analyzing black voters within a sample size that is actually a nationally representative sample size, where the margin of error increases when you try to segment by black voters. Um, so I, I just haven't seen that, that movement uh, in, in our research. And I think other groups like Cornell Belcher at Brilliant Corners that do robust sample sizes of black voters haven't seen that movement either. Josh, there's been speculation that a generation gap has opened up amongst black voters where the young voters who have no memory of the civil rights era are more Republican curious. Have you seen any evidence of that in your research? I wouldn't, for, for, first of all, you're, you're absolutely right in the generation gap. Um, I, I, I'd say it all the time. Uh, Gen Z voters vote like Gen Z. Gen Z voters look at issues like Gen Z. Right. They 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 I wouldn't call them more curious uh, towards the Republican Party, but they're a lot more critical of the Democratic Party. They've been critical of Biden's handling of Gaza. Uh, they've been critical about large economic aspirations that traditional Democrats have had. They've been they've been critical about the Democratic Party's love affair with corporate interests. Right. And, and so you're just seeing them not so much. Uh, curious about whether or not, uh, particularly Black Gen Z voters, not so much curious about what's on the other side of the aisle, but just more so frustrated with what they've been given. And I think that when we talk about the upcoming election, that is actually the biggest danger is that not that they end up voting for Republicans, but a lot of them might end up not voting at all. Um, we've said multiple times, there's three major candidates in this upcoming election, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and the couch. And the couch is looking better and better as we, as we kind of go along to some of these Gen Z voters who are upset with the Democratic Party. So, Josh, if younger black voters are drifting away from the traditional allegiance to the Democratic Party, what do you think is driving that? Is it uh, a matter of policy differences or is it something as simple as you, you don't get much older or whiter than President Joe Biden? I think it's a little bit of both. I think they've communicated just very strong policy differences with the, the, the Democratic Party uh, at large. To, to, to be fair, I guess, to, to Joe Biden, they're much more critical of how Obama um, led the country from a foreign policy standpoint and from, from an economic policy standpoint domestically as well. And so I think the policy concerns are very much so there for the younger voters. And the age concerns, I believe, are there for all. I, I saw a poll that said somewhere around 60% of Americans are, are pretty concerned about President Biden's age. So I wouldn't even say that that is specific to young to young black voters or black voters at all. I think that there's a lot of Americans that are that are worried about that. Now, every election we see polls suggesting that black voters might be leaking away from the Democrats or staying home. And lo and behold, election time, the black voters have returned to the Democrats. Now, is that sense of ebb and flow of black voters real? Or were those black voters never in doubt in those previous elections? Yeah, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. I mean, it, it reminds me also of the every election we hear about a wave. It might be a red wave or a blue wave. We heard about the red wave and in the midterms that didn't happen. Um, I think in all honesty, what ends up happening is some folks <laughs> looking to make headlines, um, either uh, don't conduct public opinion in ways that uh, should be reported upon, um, or, or we're just seeing just a little bit of that searching for other options when we're far away from the election time. But I think when we get closer to election time and the communicate, we get in paid communication cycles, 
right? We get in those couple three three four months uh, before the election where where um, the, the party is going to put best it, uh, put forward its best communicators. Um, black voters uh, oftentimes realize that there isn't much for them on the, on the right side of the aisle. Josh, you talked about this election being a contest between Biden, Trump and the couch. Beyond simple demotivation or, or apathy, lack of engagement, what are the other barriers that exist to black voter participation in this election, do you think? Yeah, so I want, I want to be, you know, ca cautious and conscious of the, of the restrictions that we're communicating about all the time, which is, uh, you know, legislate, restrictive legislation that has uh, been an attempt from some folks on the right, uh, just to straight up disenfranchise voters of color. All of those are real. Um, but the biggest deterrent, I think, is going to be enthusiasm. I, we're seeing it in, in all of our surveys. Folks are just not that enthusiastic about getting up and going to vote. Um, they're not that enthusiastic about uh, their options right now on the right and the left side of the aisle. Some folks are being more honest about that than others but they're not incredibly enthusiastic. And I think it is the job of the parties to step in there and not only explain to people why they should be enthusiastic, but do it in a way that doesn't sound like a lather, rinse, repeat message that they've heard for the last 10, 15 years. This is the most important election of your life. You have to give people an actual reason why them getting up out of their, their seat uh, to vote is going to be um, um, in their best interest this year. And I think that they, they have a responsibility to do that. Now, Josh, you've referred to black issues during this interview. You've also referred to giving black voters a reason to vote. What are some of these issues and reasons that you think would be wise for the Democratic Party to promote? There's the threat and then there's the promise, right? Um, the truth is President Trump and his vision for America is fundamentally misaligned with a large portion of black and brown people and young voters and women who seek to do things like keep autonomy over their bodies with their health care, if they're talking about um, terminating a pregnancy, uh, relieving student loan debt, or even smaller things like uh, lowering the price of prescription drugs, right? This is something that the president, that the Biden administration actually took on um, and gave, gave Medicare the, the option to, to negotiate capped insulin at $35 a month for seniors and is attempting to do that uh, for, for all Americans, right? And these are just ideals that don't exist on the other side of the aisle. The, the biggest piece of economic legislation that we saw uh, President, uh, former President Trump get through was a tax cut, was a tax cut and jobs act of which um, the trickle down did not, the trickle down economics that was promised didn't, didn't come to fruition uh, for everyday working Americans. So I think just a fundamentally different perspective of what America is and should be um, is something that they could they could, could definitely communicate on. I think an area that they maybe miss folks, um, especially on the economic tip, is speaking about large macroeconomic uh, gains that President Biden either has made or wants to make that just aren't as tangible to everyday voters, right? Communicating about things like gas and groceries um, and, and lowering costs for everyday Americans, even junk fees, things like buying tickets to a Taylor Swift or a Beyonce concert, right? Uh, or a flight to, to the, another state to see your grandpa, right? How are, how are Biden's economic policies going to impact things like that? I think it's going to be uh, an effective line of communication for, for him and the Democratic campaign moving forward. What do you make of former President Trump's attempted outreach to black voters, Josh? Uh, we've seen it for a number of months now with those rallies in South Bronx. He's also talked about maybe African-American Senator Tim Scott as his vice presidential running mate. He's certainly a key surrogate. Could he, as VP, make a difference when it comes to Trump's appeal to black voters? <laughs> I struggle believing that it will add, uh, that adding Tim Scott to the ticket will add to Trump's appeal. One, black Republicans are categorically unpopular among black people. And oftentimes they are not elected by black people. Tim Scott joins a long line of black Republicans who often win elections by garnering a massive amount of support from white voters who are very ideologically misaligned with their black neighbors. So there's like an electoral and oftentimes cultural separation that hurts uh, black Republicans' favorabilities. I can only imagine that that's true for Tim Scott as well. Secondly, Trump's coalition harbors 
some of the most measurably racist voters in America. Um, whether or not Trump is racist is an argument that folks can volley back and forth until the day ends. But what almost can't be argued is that is that racists think that he's racist. I remember doing work in 2016 around the presidential election, and I saw a stat that showed um, the counties that hosted a Trump rally saw like a 200% increase in hate crimes, right? So maybe that might not be 51% or more of Trump's voters, but I believe it's enough to piss off a portion of his base that he needs to win an election. And I think people can say anything that they want about Trump, but the man knows his base. And he knows the deep racial tensions that he stokes through his rhetoric. And I just don't believe that elevating a black man to, to that level of status could be beneficial for his base. Now, Josh, I've read a number of quotes and news reports about how black voters feel like they're being taken for granted by Democrats. Do you think that's true? Because it seems from my perspective that Democrats are acutely conscious of appealing to black voters. Yeah. I I, I might stay away from the question of do I think it's true because I'm a pollster and I get to, to, to read public opinion at a nationally representative level. And I can tell you that 57% of black women voters, uh, we, we found out from a poll, believe that their vote is being taken for granted, including 73% of black Gen Z uh, uh, women um, that believe that, that their vote is being taken for granted. So that's a massive oh, percentage. So look, I think that it can be certainly said that the Democratic Party, I have seen the efforts that they have made to not only a, a like a, be attuned to, to the priorities of, of black voters, um, some, it, some of it is not, it's not landed. And, and they need to find a way to connect the intent um, with the actual results of making black and brown voters for that matter feel like their vote is not being taken uh, taken advantage. And Josh, what advice would you be giving President Biden right now if he is to shore up his support amongst African-American voters? Should he be deploying surrogates like Barack and Michelle Obama? Should he be looking at particular policy areas to focus on? What, what is your advice now? To be honest, he's going to do both, right? They're going to they're gonna retool their perspective on policy. Um, we've already seen them doing a little bit of that, and they're, they're going to employ... Uh, Barack Obama. And I think the Obama effect is powerful, no matter where it is. I think President Obama is is one of the best communicators in, in modern American politics that we've ever seen. I also think former President Trump is, is one as well. Um, they do very different things, uh, but but they're both they both have been effective. I, 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 I also think a massive part of Biden's win in 2020 can be attributed to how he overperformed. Uh, President, former President Obama in the suburbs with white seniors in swing states like Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, and even Virginia, will Obama's charm be as effective there? That's, a, that's an instrumental part of Biden's base. Not so sure. Young voters, as we talked about old days, young voters are much more critical of the Obama era uh, than, than the younger voters when he first ran. And, and this is where some of Biden's bleeding is actually happening and might be detrimental um, in the election. Will his charm be as effective there? I'm not so sure. Uh, so look, I think some, some pissed off kids in Philly and Detroit and Michigan uh, and w w Milwaukee and Atlanta could be the difference maker here in an election. And I think it is notable that Obama's uh, charm might be a little bit less effective in some of those areas that, that Biden, I think, will need the most help. So I'm not saying it's a lost cause, but I do think that uh, it'll be interesting to watch moving forward if, if Obama's charm will actually be positioned where it needs to be to, to help President Biden get another term. Joshua Doss, thanks for your time this week. We appreciate you having a fireside chat. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate you.